Daniel Gavon of the MMA Report here in Thackersville, <laughs> Oklahoma for Bellator 111. With me is Bjorn Rebney, Bellator CEO. Starting off at the main event, Eduardo Dante scores a submission win. Uh, what was your overall take with the fight? Uh, Anthony had the right game plan going into it. He was careful in the first round. He got top control. He didn't. He didn't give any. He didn't give any arms. He didn't give any limbs. Um, just kept his control real, real tight, which is what you got to do against Dantes because he's just a freak on the ground. And then, I mean, you know, the, the Eduardo is just he's he's dangerous at any moment of any fight anywhere, whether it's standing on the ground. And you saw that. Cirque du Soleil type of submission, it just, you know, you don't see those things except out of crazy freak athletes who just have been doing it since they were kids and, and just have it, it's just second nature. Uh, Dantes reacts, he doesn't think. It just body moves into things and it's just, it's a crazy, it's one of the better submissions I've seen in the last couple of years and, and it's just, there's really no defense to that. I mean, it's just, you know, no matter how good you think you are defensively, that's it's tough to defend yourself against that kind of stuff. He's just, he's a wickedly talented 135 pounder. Certainly. So with the win, Dantes, with the submission victory, does that set him up with Joe Warren on May 2nd? Is that yeah. still the date? May 2nd, Rebel, uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Warren versus Dantes for the world title. It's just great. He got out of this, you know, no injury, hands, everything was great. So we're on. Okay. Of the four light heavyweight fights, which one do you stood out? Which impressed you the most? The heavies. The he I mean, excuse me, the heavies. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I, you know, just as from a selfish fan's perspective, I loved Lavar's fight against Ryan. Okay. I thought it was just wickedly exciting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Lavar is just a, a fighter's fighter. He's just going to throw for the fences, and if something connects, lights out because he hits with a ton of power. Um, I just thought it was entertaining. I thought it was a great fight to watch, and, and it was just great back and forth. And you know, it, it the early finish. I, I thought it was a really entertaining fight. I thought it was a great fight. With uh, Volkov's victory over Mark Halat, it was kind of an awkward finish. It, it just, to me, looked kind of weird. Um, from your vantage point, what did you take from that? I went back to the truck to watch it again mm -hmm. um, because I saw it as well. It was just three quick shots, really, really short shots with the left hand, um, which, which looked like they were like right between the orbital and the and the chin, and they just, whatever it was, it just it concussed him and stopped him but they were short shots. It was an odd-looking knockout. Um, I've seen successive shots. You know, I mean, we've all seen it. Six, successive small shots, sometimes on the ground, sometimes hammer fists that don't look like they're that powerful, and you just get one, two, three, and suddenly you just you, you, you rock a guy. That's what happened, and then Volkov's got great finishing instincts. So. There were two fighters that I think stood out on the preliminary card. First off would be Brett being Primus in the lightweight division. Five straight first-round victories. Yeah. Uh, do you think this is a fighter that's going to get in a tournament fairly soon? Pretty soon. Uh, Primus has been looking really awesome, um, strong and calm and finishing fights. And, um, you know, we I don't know if the next step is the tournament, but it's going to be a pretty close step. Mm -hmm. But you think you'll get him in here this season before the season ends? Or? Uh, boy, I'd have to ask Sam and Zach in terms of scheduling when we're going to see him again. Mm -hmm. If we don't see him this season, um, over the next 60 days, we'll obviously see him again this summer at some point. Okay, the other fighter that was impressive was middleweight Abdul Razak. Oh, yeah, one and oh. He was a late replacement, right? Yeah, he was a late replacement. He looked great. I mean, he's, he's got two fights now, and mm -hmm. that was just, it was explosive. He let his hands go. His technique is heavy handed, but he's got good technical boxing. I mean, he, he looked really good. He yeah. looked really good. Well, really he solid. looks like a welterweight. To, yeah. So, is this a fighter you're going to extend a contract to? Yeah, I mean, it, good looking kid. Um, and was in against a, a tough guy. I mean, wasn't in against a you know, guy off the street. He's in against a tough guy. So, um, guy we got to keep our eye on. I mean, two and oh, you got to. You got to walk before you run, and you got to mm -hmm. then jog, and then eventually start running. <laughs> yes, but sir. Yes, sir. He's an he had an impressive performance tonight. Mm -hmm. um, Eric Prindle on the other card. He's 37 years old. Has lost four of his last five. Th yeah. This loss is pretty brutal. Uh, what do you see him fighting again in Bellator, or have you talked to him about after yeah, the fight? I, I, I like Eric a lot. Mm -hmm. Good dude with a big heart. Um, maybe one of the more unusual fighters in that he really doesn't want to hurt anybody ever. Yeah. Just the nicest kind of mm -hmm. soft wonderful dude you'd ever want to meet and um you know we'll have to talk to eric and see what his thoughts are he's had a rough run of late and tonight was not a great you know tonight was tough to watch because he's a good dude with a big heart but um i don't know you know we'll, we'll have to take a look and talk to eric and figure out what's what if if anything's next and the and the fighter that was absent in the main event rafael silva how is he progressing from his knee injury uh okay pretty serious injury so we're probably looking at months um you know we'll see we'll see what happens um, we'll see what happens with, with Joe's fight against Eduardo, and then you know hopefully he ends up in a position where he can come back maybe late summer, early fall. 
you don't want you never want to rush a knee, but hopefully late summer, early fall. So looking forward to the next event, you have the Walt Toy Tournament. War Machine uh, ha apparently was in a car accident. Yeah. And so he's out of the tournament, correct? Yeah, I got that call um, a few days back that he'd been in the accident, but he didn't know the extent of the injuries. But apparently, it's a slip disc, and there's yeah. nothing he can do. He can't even feel his left leg. He text he was texting me today, and he's like, "Dude, I, I can't. I physically can't feel my foot." So he said, "I'm I'm out," and it's just sucks because he had a good camp and and uh wanted to get back in and kind of prove the doubters wrong and based on you know getting submitted in the last fight unexpectedly but uh but he's out nothing you can do you know just yeah. a car accident played the role as MMA reporter saying that paul bradley would step in to fight no sean Brell. is that true uh those final decisions haven't been made yet we may have to do some juggling because of just how we set up our tournaments one mm -hmm. through eight um but there'll be some juggling going on over the next few days, and we'll probably make announcements, if not late tomorrow, surely Monday. As far as the, the Bellator pay-per-view has gotten a lot of discussion, uh, Rampage, King Mo has kind of been, by a lot of people, penciled in as a co-made event. Is that something you're looking at? Haven't made the final determination mm -hmm. yet, but, I mean, it's just a, an awesome fight between two guys who absolutely can't stand each other. Uh, it would be a great fight on a show like that. Page is back. He's healthy. His knees are back. I see, you know, I mean, it's, he trains six minutes from the front door of my office, so I go over and see him at the gym, and he's just he's rocking and rolling again. He's the old Rampage. So, um, yeah, could potentially be a great fit for that show. Are there any bouts that, that are floating around for the card? Yeah, a lot of them in my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, some are going to depend on what happens over the next few weeks. Um but there's a lot of them in my head. We got some exciting stuff. I mean, obviously, up top, Alvarez Chandler is going to be epic, mm -hmm. and then, um, and then we'll see. We'll start making announcements probably over the next week to 14 days. And have you found a venue for the pay-per-view yet? Uh, we have. Haven't announced it yet, but okay. we're, uh, we're making announcements <laughs> super soon. But we have found a venue, and we love it, and we're stoked about it, and uh, and about ready to make the big announce. All right, just a few more questions. Sure. On his Instagram, Will Brooks uh, said that his fight in April was off. He's he hinted at a possible May. About have you, I mean, what's the details of Will Brooks? The wickedly talented dude. <laughs> We're looking to uh, looking to put Will in a big, big event. Let a lot of people see what we already know, which some other people don't know. And he is a he is a tornado, and we want the biggest possible audience uh, that we can get for him. So, you're uh, I'll leave that up to your imagination. <laughs> okay, Doug. Okay, um, I, I guess I can't follow that up, but uh, on the other side, a, a heavyweight that you signed in 2012, R Ruslan Magomedov. He yeah. never fought in Bellator. He was just picked up by the UFC lately. Was this a matter of him being released or his contract expiring? No, he, he actually never fought for us. He had a bunch of visa issues. We couldn't get mm -hmm. him into the country, um, and just he, he didn't fit into the plans right now. And rather than just holding him out on the shelf, we just said, "Look, dude, go wherever you want to go and sign wherever you want to sign." And we just couldn't. You know, we had our lock on what we wanted to do with the heavies right now and don't know when the next heavyweight tournament's going to be so it just and and we were just we were locked and loaded this season like every show is 13 fights or more and there's just there aren't a lot of spots so it just made sense to just let him walk and and good luck to him he's a good kid speaking you know, of heavyweights Vinicius Spartan how's his how's he looking uh he was he was uh tweeting back and forth with me tonight on the show okay. um it's doing good his rehab's going good he's hopefully to be back sometime maybe in the summer mm -hmm. um good kid fun fighter to watch just go for broke crazy fighter that just brings it and gives you great fights every time so um but i, I would hope sam venetius this summer you think Vinicius. spartan yeah, it's still still the, right now. yeah the knee is still an issue but hopefully summer and on social media mike richmond who just lost to desmond green has been really hinting strongly hinting at a drop down to 135 have you discussed that with him i talked um zach white who works in our talent development arm and does an incredible job and I've been talking to Mike um, for a while about a drop to 35. He mm -hmm. wanted to give it a run at 45 again. Um, he's an incredibly powerful puncher, really quick hands, which I think would translate beautifully, but he's a small 45er. You look at a Mike Richmond versus a Pat Curran or a Daniel Strauss, these guys are monsters. Mm -hmm. You know, Pat and Daniel are just, you'll see them next week, I mean, they, they look like welters. You know, and, and Mike's just not that big of a dude. So, and at 35, with that power in both hands and those head yeah. kicks, he would be a wicked force to be reckoned with. So, I, I'd love to see it if Mike can make the cut, and um, hopefully he can. Be a great spot for him. Be a great spot for him. And lastly, um, Doug Marshall will be reapplying for his license, I believe, for his Bellator 115 bout. Right. If things go wrong, you know, knock on wood, do you have a replacement for uh, Brett Cooper? We we have a replacement on uh, on Doug's fight, but we've but Doug's already gotten cleared. Oh, has he yeah, gone and cleared? He's cleared, gone so to he's the pencil. He's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, he's okay. already gotten cleared off suspension. He's ready to go. And um, but doesn't he have to apply for a license with Czech Congo? 
Uh, this I week, I believe so. But given that he's on, he has no national suspensions, mm-hmm. and he's you know he's should completely be clean. It should be a no brainer. He breathes. Yeah, okay, he's in good shape. I mean, he's he's a, you know a good fighter. He's fought regularly for us. He's got no injuries. He's got nothing that would mm-hmm. prohibit him from getting licensed any more than anybody else on a card. Okay, well, thank you for your time. You're yeah, my pleasure, dude.